The classic Omnitrix is the most iconic watch in the Ben 10 show, but we don't only get to see one iteration of that watch, we get two from two different universes. The original 2006 classic watch from the first series and a decade later from the reboot Omnitrix. But we're here to try and find out which watch was objectively better. Now to keep it fair, we won't be using the Omni Kicks or Omni Enhanced modes. And for classic, we won't be using the recalibrated watch, since it's an upgraded version of the classic watch. A few factors to consider before we start grading are the playlists, the functionality, and lastly, the malfunctions as well. So each player starts off with a standard 10 aliens. For the side of the classic watch, we get aliens like Forearms, Heat Blast, Upgrade, Rip Jaws, Accelerate, Stinkfly, Grey Matter, Ghost Freak, Diamond Head, and Wild Nut. The classic playlist is an all-time iconic list with great aliens who all have cool designs and interesting powers. The reboot on the other hand boasts a similar playlist with Heat Blast, Forearms, Accelerate, Stinkfly, Grey Matter, Cannonbolt, Wild Vine, Upgrade and Overflow. A few aliens in this list do pretty much the same thing but for the ones that are different or straight up new alien replacements, let's do some comparison. For both Stinkflies, we can see that they both take two different designs being alternative versions of the Lepidopteran species. Both Stinkflies have slime projectiles and a sort of toxic gas but where they both differ is in proficiency. The classic Stingfly is a lot more of a slime time bug shooting slime from his eyes and his mouth and creating a sticky situation for his opponent. He has only ever used the toxic gas ability once in the episode Don't Drink the Water. The reboot Lepidopterin on the other hand has the Nick Choice Awards energy but he is a lot more of a Sinned <laughs> League of Legends player, prioritizing his gases in combat. Another switch is between the aliens Rip Jaws and Overflow. Rip Jaws, even though he was underused, was an extreme diver. He kind of reminded me of Aquaman, if he could rip metal with his teeth. He's not someone you want to 1v1 in water. But Overflow, on the other hand, has the water manipulation stat down pat. He can also breathe underwater and on land which is something Rip Jaws just isn't capable of, not for long periods at least. And I guess for the other traded aliens like Ghost Freak vs Wildvine and Cannonbolt vs Wildmud ends up completely even. Or at least that's what I thought at first until I did some deeper digging into the nature of Wildmud and his extrasensory abilities that he has. And they are a lot more valuable than what I thought initially. This all comes from his primary ability where he is able to see without eyes. It gives him the ability to take down invisible opponents and he doesn't have a problem fighting anyone who is in the dark. This gives the classic playlist an edge over the reboot. So let's give them a point. For both watches, they have a pretty similar level of functionality as it regards the basic uses that the watches can do. The active mode where the watch flashes green and Ben has access to all of his aliens along with his timeout and recharge mode as well. Pretty standard stuff, but they have quite a bit of different modes between both watches. While the classic watch boasts 3 extra modes in the recalibrated mode, scan mode and the self destruct mode, the reboot Omnitrix has a great deal of other modes as well that the classic doesn't have. Stuff like ectonorite safeguards, a holographic communicator and of course it has its own recalibrated mode along with all of these other modes. But an even more humongous difference is the playlist limit that the reboot watch has. While the classic Omnitrix has no limit on the number of aliens that can be in the playlist at any given time, the reboot does. Switching out DNA pods to facilitate 10 slots in the roster at any time. However, I would still place the reboot above the classic watch in functionality because of a wide variety of modes that it possesses. And for the one thing Azmuth got right, is the Ectonurite safeguards. This stops the watch from being hacked or entered by Ectonurites unlike what happened in Classic. And that was almost a life ending thing for Ben in the episode Ghost Freaked Out. So there goes a point to the reboot. Now we're neck and neck and the tiebreaker will be ranking which watch has had the worst malfunction. The reboot Omnitrix has a whole list of malfunctions that I found out on the wiki and it's a doozy ranging from crazy stuff like the hybridization function to being shut down in stormy weather. The classic Omnitrix has only had the faceplate fall off, 
a mana contamination, and also it glitched in the episode a small problem, getting Ben stuck as grey matter for the entire episode. Not a bad episode if you ask me. Comparing both of these lists, I can safely say that the reboot is a lot worse. An example being the stormy weather problem. And we can analyze this with this scenario. If Ben from the reboot was in the episode Monster Weather, he would be completely out of it during the fight against SAM. And it would have probably caused a lot more casualties on the scene of the concert. Having a watch depend on the literal weather is a horrible thing for its functionality. Hence, I give the final point to the classic Omnitrix, having it beat up the reboot watch by one point. Did you enjoy the video? Comment down below which Omnitrixes you want me to compare next and subscribe.